I gotta say, one of the biggest challenges that I've ever seen using Marketing Face, uh, and I got it's probably the biggest challenge I've seen with my own two eyes anywhere in this world, is 2016. Uh, the business was $250,000 in debt because we had acquired uh, a bunch of different loans uh, trying to build this business. Uh, then what ended up happening was we spent a lot of money on the website and the website wasn't converting very well and wasn't getting paid customers, paying customers. So then all these funds were being tied up, but we owe these people and then we have employees. Now we have more employees because we have production lines and we have rent and we have to buy equipment and all that stuff and supplies. So our cost of doing business started going higher and higher and higher and higher and our margins were getting lower and lower and lower and lower. So it got to the point in 2016 when this is like the pivotal moment in using marketing history. Uh, we owed $250,000. A lot of our stuff was in collections. So we had collections banging down our doors, calling our phones. Uh, we had owed rent to this building and the employees were not be able to get paid. So all this stuff happened at the same day, same time. And what ended up happening was we got locked out of our building. There, the owner of the, the landlord actually put like a chain saying we can't get into the building and we couldn't pay the employees. So the employees all went on strike. So we couldn't do any uh, production, nothing like that. And then, and we owed all these people. So we were at like this standstill. We were like, we were either gonna sink or swim. There was only like a one to 2% chance that we were gonna swim. 98% chance that we were gonna fail and this UZ marketing would be total history at that point. But luckily, Quan is a mastermind when it comes to being able to channel resources. Uh, most people don't know this and I don't know if he'll be happy if I share this information, but there's a game in 1999 called StarCraft. It is a resource management strategy game. He was the number one player in the United States back in the day. And what that tells me, knowing this about his character, is that he can manage resources effectively so well that he became the number one person to manage these resources in a game in the United States. So couldn't he apply that same level of strategy and mindset to business? That's why I followed him personally, because I saw that and I was like, I'm gonna get behind this guy. But basically, the reason that we got out of it, I attribute it to his ability to see where the resources need to go and allocate it. And thank goodness for that because that's how we got to where we are now. So after the challenges that we faced, right? We face challenges every single day. They're nowhere near as, the one, as big as the one in 2016, but I have to be transparent. I personally have made some million dollar mistakes. And it, like looking back on it, I think to myself, wow, I can't believe I make those mistakes. But I have evolved to the point where I realized that those were fundamentally necessary to our evolution. That ha what happened in 2016, if it didn't happen, there's no way we could have been able to scale to where we are at now and where we're going. So the way we see those challenges now, even the small challenges that occur on a daily basis, is we need to go through them. We need to make a crap load of mistakes over and over and over again. That's why I like to tell some of the uh, employees that I work with, make the mistake. Do it, do it wrong, because if you do it wrong, you know what not to do. It, it allows you to learn from those mistakes. When you're riding a bike, there's nobody that I know of that's ever just picked it up and didn't fall and started riding right away. That's like the most basic, generalized example I can give. So to be super successful in business, to become a master bicycle rider, you have to make a lot of mistakes and fall down so many times. So that's kind of our mindset when it comes to those challenges. I think handling challenges with customers is probably a lot easier now. There is a story of, and this is an interesting story because Kwan actually went out of town to pick up a screen printing press. He went to go to another shop and they've been around for 40 something years and their, uh, I believe their revenue was $2 million a year. So Kwan is very inquisitive. He went over there to pick up this MNR Saturn, which is what we used to screen print yard signs started asking this guy questions, right? It's like, oh, so what do you think your biggest challenge is stopping you from getting from 2 million to growing even further? And the guy said, the biggest challenge is people. And coming from personal experience now, I can say that is definitely the biggest challenge that we've ever had to face. Uh, even though the 2016 was like, it's a challenge of its own right, I think this is a different type of challenge. And I think uh, the challenges are like, way different at every level of business because people aren't very challenging when you're like doing uh, five, six figures a year. Once you start doing seven figures and more, people become the challenge. Uh, so it, it's just like an evolution of how we interpret and how we handle those challenges. So now, even though we had those 
big challenges with people and getting locked out of our place in 2016, uh, the challenges now are more digestible because we realize that we have to go through these and we want to go through these. We welcome them so that we can go past it and hit the next level.